Bro, you're kidding me, right? No chance in hell. <laughs> that thing is massive! Dude, no chance in hell that the cat would have ever done that. 7 a.m., 36 degrees. Sounds like the perfect formula for a morning cold start on Dream Diesel giveaway number 14. <laughs> Good morning everybody. Just had a very nice morning drive in the Kelderman Air Ride F250, aka Dream Diesel giveaway number 14 for the first time ever with the gooseneck. And I gotta tell you guys, this thing toes on an entirely new level. I'm not gonna go into any additional details right now because we're gonna make an entire video comparing air ride to traditional suspension on the other trucks that I have just because it is so dramatically different. I'm gonna leave that there for you guys right now. So we're out here to pick up my Caterpillar's replacement. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, or if you haven't been with some recent uploads, I actually sold my beloved Caterpillar skid steer, my first piece of equipment. <laughs> I love that thing, and it was almost kind of sad to see it go. And it was all kind of so out of the blue. We're actually over here at my buddy David's farm. He just so happened to have the one machine go up for sale that I would replace my Caterpillar with. He let me know about it last week, so I decided just kind of on a whim to list my skid steer just to kind of gauge the interest. And I only listed it on Facebook Marketplace. It wasn't but in 24 hours that we had a buyer lined up and they were at my house picking it up as you guys saw. It was just one of those things where I couldn't pass up the deal and it all kind of just happened to fall into place. So today we're taking delivery of its replacement. Small teaser right now, it's a different color and it's a different brand. To those that know equipment and have experience with all the different brands and manufacturers that are out there, I think you're gonna understand why I went this route. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the video today. Now, if you guys also missed the big announcement, Dream Diesel giveaway number 14 is that Kelderman Air Ride F250 and $15,000 cash. And 10 times entries are live right now, but they'll be ending in just four days. So if you guys wanna enter for your chance to win, click the link below and grab yourself anything on the site and your entries get automatically submitted. Just think, you might be taking that beast of a truck home and starting off your 2021. Talk about a way to bring in the new year. So the hard part's over with, we've got this thing paid for and it's officially mine and it happens to be right in this barn right here. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this thing, and get it loaded up so we can get it back to the house. So hopefully I don't get blown over in the making of this video. The wind out here is terrible, so I apologize in advance if it comes through. But yes, boys, we made the switch to orange. We've got ourselves a 2012 SVL 90. This is the largest of the skid steer lineup produced by Kubota, and in the class of skid steers, it is the biggest and most capable. Now, I know a lot of you guys saw the Instagram post and were curious as to why I was getting rid of my Caterpillar because as I talked about in all the videos that I ever made with that thing, I absolutely loved it. And it was true, and it was my baby, and it will always and forever be my baby because it was my first piece of equipment. I truly loved that thing, and I set it up exactly how I wanted it, and I had really no ambition to sell it until this machine became available, and then I realized that selling it 
made a lot of sense. So the big reason that it all kind of lined out is that this machine was actually for sale from one of my good friends and I knew that it was coming from good hands. If that wasn't the case, I don't know if I would have actually considered doing the deal, but it kind of seemed like it was all meant to be. Pause again for the wind. Check out Jake, he found a great spot to sit. <laughs> And then I really started thinking about all the things that I could do that I was running into problems doing with the mid-size machine up here on the homestead. Just for instance, there's a lot of groundwork that still needs to be done to prepare this property for what it is that we're gonna be doing with it down the road. And sometimes that would require moving like really big rocks. Now, not those rocks because that would require like a 12 to 14 ton excavator. But rocks like this one over here would not move with my other skid see, whereas this one has the weight to move it and it's got the hydraulic flow and power and breakout force to actually get the job done. Now that's just one example, but I figured in the instance it would make sense. So naturally I took to Facebook Marketplace and listed my 259B3 for sale and it wasn't but 24 hours later that the new owners came out to pick up the machine as you guys saw in the last upload. It all happened extremely fast. Now I'm gonna make a future video about kind of the pros and cons between what my experiences will be as we get to operating this machine here behind me and my old 259 because they're kind of in that same generation 2011, 2012 year making model. This thing is an absolute brute. Standing here next to it, it feels like I'm in the presence of something considerably larger than my old machine. It is in every way, shape, and form, length, width, height, and weight, bigger and heavier than my last machine. This one comes in at, I believe it's like 90 to 92 horsepower. It's got almost 2,000 more pounds of breakout force. It can lift a few thousand pounds more and it just does everything that the old machine really couldn't do or ran into limiting factors of. Now that doesn't mean by any case that it is the jack of all trades of skid steers because having a bigger machine probably has some downfalls as well. As I stumble upon those and encounter them, I will communicate them. But fortunately, we don't have extremely tight areas that we have to navigate frequently, which would be a limiting factor of a bit of the large chassis size. Now this thing's pretty sweet. It's in great condition. It was actually used on a farm. There's very little rust on the undercarriage. There's a little bit of paint kind of chipping in the areas where you kind of put your feet, you step in and out of the machine. Some scratches here on the guards over the bucket cylinders and some little things wear and tear. But mechanically wise, this thing is super sound. Fun fact for you guys, Kubota's somewhat been in bed with a lot of the other manufacturers over the last decade. The motor that's in this machine right here actually has similar variants all produced by Kubota. Kubota's really done an awesome job of taking on the compact track loader and compact loader game over the last few years since they came out with this machine right here. Kind of just a fun fact, my 259B3 actually had a variation of a Kubota manufactured motor and other brands do as well, such as Bobcat and Takeyushi. I think if I'm saying that right, Takeyushi, Take... I'm definitely saying that wrong, but you guys catch my drift. And it was basically at that point in time where Kubota was like, hey, we're making motors for these things, so why don't we get into the game ourselves? And well, this was their product. Now I've literally only operated this machine from driving it from my trailer over to here, but I do wanna jump inside of it real quick and show you guys around some of my favorite features. First being the cab on this thing. So it's got a super wide entrance, which makes getting in and out of the machine almost effortless. And then it's got this fold down style door, which allows you to enter and exit the machine, whether the boom is all the way down, in the middle, or all the way up. In whatever position, you can actually exit this thing without having to put the boom all the way in its down resting position, like pretty much all of the other manufacturers have designed their machines to do. And the space in here is unbelievable. Now, another cool thing about this is you can lift it up, and when you lock it into place, so they have these little lockout pins and you can actually operate the machine without any safety lights or bypasses while the door is open. So you really have a lot of flexibility. So we got our two little kind of safety bars here. This is a new style versus my old machine, whereas the old machine had kind of the roller coaster style safety bar that came down over your head. This one's pretty nice. You literally just put these two spindles up and you can get in and out of the machine that simply. 
Now this one still is pilot control, so this is your drive forward, drive back, left, right. And this is your bucket and boom control. You've got your down, up, your curl open, and your curl closed. Over here, kind of simple, which I really, really like. You've got your safety switch, so this is your go green, your operator button. You've got your parking button. You've got some override switches, and then your lights, obviously key. You've got your throttle, and then your foot position throttle as well. And then on this side, we've got our windshield wiper control. We've got AC and heat in this unit, which is gonna be super nice, especially once we continue to get colder and colder and colder in the area. Oh, oh that's nice, dude. Oh my god. Oh. And then right here is a nice feature that I didn't have on my old machine where I have the ability to lock and unlock coupler for the quick disconnect. So I will not have to get out of the machine to operate that mechanism or change to any of those attachments right there. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna make a video going into all the things that I absolutely love after I've experienced some operating time in this thing. The first thing that I noticed sitting in here though is I'm in a bigger machine, but I feel like I have more visibility than that of a smaller machine. It's kind of counterintuitive in a way, but I can very much see everything around me. It almost seems like I'm kind of sitting higher up in the machine, whereas in the Caterpillar, it felt like I was very low in the center of the body, which made for visibility challenges, whereas here, we can see a ton of stuff behind us. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't without influence from some of my friends, such as Weston Chaplin and Kyle from RR Buildings. I'd watched a few of their videos where they were not only operating, but reviewing their SVL series tractors, their SVL series units, and they ranted and raved about them. I had an opportunity to operate one, and it was at that point that I fell in love and I'm happy to say that this all just really fell into place. I'm very excited about having the opportunity to own a piece of equipment like this because the capabilities are truly endless. Now one of the things you can see Jake there, the cutting tooth is actually loose on that bucket right now. So I don't really want to drive this thing into too much dirt today. I want to take that cutting edge off and actually swap it around because the other side is very healthy and has a lot more life to it. All right guys, so enough talking from me. I'm dying to run this thing. I know you guys are dying to see it in action. So let's go find some stuff to move around, shall we? All right, guys, so we got some bad news. I didn't realize this, but somehow this quick coupler got totally tweaked and it's not operable at the moment. So it looks like we're not gonna grab the grapple bucket, but fortunately we have a few more attachments. So let's see what we can find. Slight work of that one, dude. Yeah, just for reference purpose, I went at that briefly with the 259, and just the curling ability, it's incredible how powerful these machines are. Okay? It's truly eye opening. And I think we're gonna try and get that one out. I don't know, I can't really tell how big that thing is. That one might be a little bit of a doozy. I don't know, I think I need to approach from this side. This side, yeah, I think it's longer, so yeah. Give her a go! Got some wood in, in there. Ah, I caught me one. Finally, it's a keeper. Oh, 
I'm so glad I turned the thing to a few pretty solid use cases out here at the homestead and needless to say damn is it a beast anything that i went to tackle that i wouldn't have been able to tackle in the past was handled like without a question at all these big sumac trees i tried to push over with the cat that just could not happen figured we'd give it a shot with the kubota and well you can see the end result there was a rocky ridge that kind of ran where that branch was moved all those put them up in a pile we're gonna be able to grade out all of this pick all the rocks out that are kind of being nuisances well except these right here and then we're gonna be smooth sailing to bring a whole bunch of dirt in here and just get this all leveled off but guys this is the new skid steer that you'll be seeing on the channel and i am so happy with it i had a lot of assumptions going into owning a kubota the svl line pretty much all of those are pretty spot on the accuracy of the controls is really, really tight and precise. The comfort of the cab is everything that everybody rants and raves about. The ergonomics of the control layout works really, really well. Everything's right kind of with arm's reach. You have a lot of area to move around and kind of do what you need to do. Heat works really well. The door is awesome because you can pop it up, pop it down, do whatever you need to do, even if the boom is elevated. And it is freaking powerful to say the least. feel complete again. There was about a day lag between the point at which the cat sold and getting this thing. Guys, I am so happy with this thing. I finally feel like at least the projects that we're going to be getting into are going to be made considerably more possible because of that heavy lifter right there. And to be honest with you guys, I always get myself in the sticky situations where in this instance, we've got the new red fifth gen the Denali and eight ball somewhat in the way. Traditionally, what I need to do is kind of pull in the driveway and loop up and around this direction so I can back the gooseneck in. But I wonder now, maybe I can just do that all. How you doing now i've been thinking a lot lately being that i have motocross history about picking myself up maybe like a 110 or something like that come springtime i think that the back part of my property would be perfectly suited for a nice little pit bike track in the woods i don't know what i like more riding it or making it i guess only time will tell well anyway guys i'm gonna wrap up this video here i had a ton of fun i'm glad that we could put this thing up against a whole bunch of different obstacles trees tree branches logs rocks dirt and whatever else in between i specifically put it into some scenarios that i put my previous skid steer into and it really didn't get the job done purely to show basically myself that it does in fact have more power and well ladies and gentlemen confirmed that thing is a freaking brute. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a like a transformer, something out of the movies. Well, it's safe to say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in love. Love at first sight? Yeah, I think so. And lastly, man, the Ford. Let's just say that if you're considering entering the wind this truck and you have the need to tow, you need to know that thing is on an entirely new level. We'll get more into that in another upload. So that being said, guys, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and tap that thumbs up button before we all head out, and I'll see you in the next upload.